So here's this Ryobi riding mower all back together out in the driveway, ready to cut grass. This is the RM480E. So let's get right into this and see what all I had to do to test the batteries on this riding mower. I had to take them out to test them. I already have all the covers off of it. When I got it, they said that they were concerned that they, they thought that the batteries weren't holding up very well. The batteries are dated 9 of 2020. And uh, it seems to not take a full charge. And it, it doesn't last very long. The batteries, the level starts dropping pretty quick. So I think maybe there's one bad battery. So I have these covers off already. We're getting ready to slide this battery tray out. So there's a bolt that's... That goes down in the center here. It's nice. This nice long bolt here. That drops down in the center there. And you got these covers here. That you have to take out. You have to disconnect that. That guy there. That plugs in to this one here. That connects the battery pack to the mower. I have to take. To get that off. To get that one there off. I had to take the battery how to disconnect it from those two batteries there then there's two bolts that go down through here those guys there and then once you have these other wires and connectors up out of the way you can slide the battery tray out now I want to test the battery so I got to disconnect them all but this won't come out till I slide the battery pack out now it's very heavy so, it's got this handle right here. It's got some sliders right there. And I'm going to slide it back under this table here and see how that goes. Let's give this a whirl once. Something like that. So, now we can get this out of here. Well, not quite. I still have to disconnect. So, i got to take some wires off in order to get that out of there. Now these batteries still have a lot of stored energy in them, so you want to take off those two wires in the center so you can get that battery hold down out of there, and that way you don't have to worry about any wires touching, completing a circuit, and, you know, making sparks and possibly causing a fire. Now all the labels I see on this are all warning labels. I don't see anything that makes, makes any sense to tell me what these are. Ugh! All right, now we're getting somewhere. A lot of crap. <laughs> so these batteries are maintenance free. Sealed lead acid batteries. So this is these are not lithium batteries. These are just lead acid batteries. Made in China. How about that? Go figure. Now this here should be the battery size, the LPC 1275. So it's a 12-volt 75 amp hour battery. So that should be uh, like a classification of a size, that LPC 12-75. So now we'll get my tester out, see what we can make out of these. It doesn't say this is a gel battery or anything like that, or, or an, it doesn't say AGM, just maintenance-free sealed lead-acid battery. I would think if it was like an AGM battery, it would say something on it someplace. So, let's get my tester, see what happens. So, here's this Viking battery tester. This is Harbor Freight Special here. And uh, you got to have it hooked up to a battery for it to work at all. But it comes with two, two clamps here. I've been using this for a few months now, and I like it. I think it's fairly accurate. So we're going to match up the colors. This terminal here 
has a little corrosion on it. I did notice that, so it's possible that this battery is a problem. See if we can get this on the screen here. Maybe it'll focus. So we're gonna go through the steps here. Battery test. Standard flooded AGM. It's got all these different possibilities. I think it's just a standard flooded battery. Now, one thing to note here is replacement batteries are listed as sealed lead acid, AGM, or gel batteries. It depends who the seller is. 75 on the side of the battery. But we'll go with 75 amp hours. We're going to go with no for being in a vehicle because that means turn the lights on and put a load on the battery to take off the surface charge. So now it is testing. Let's see what it says. Bad replace. Health is 35%. State of charge, 88. Measured amp hours are 46. So this one tests bad. So now we will move to the next battery which is this one down here. Don't have a good connection somewhere. There we go. Well, they all read about the same. Got an itch there. They all read pretty much the same. They're all bad according to the amp hour rating at 75. So just for the heck of it, we're going to manipulate a little couple things here. We're going to test it at a different amp hour. Now, maybe I'm not testing the right setting here. I'm testing amp hours because that's the measurement that's on the, on the side of the battery there. So this tester starts at 60. We can turn this down to, we'll put it at 50 amp hours and test it that way. And it's going to say it's good. Because 45, 46 amp hours, 48 is almost what it thinks it's rated at. Yep, good pass. State of health is all the way up at 81% instead of 36, whatever it was before. The measured amp hours are 47 out of 50. And the voltage is 12 and a half. So the voltage on these is good, but the capacity is low. So... If you were to measure these with a voltmeter, it would be 12 and a half volts on this particular battery. And you might think, well, that's not too bad. We'll just charge it up some more. But the amp hours, the, the capacity inside the battery is supposed to be 75 on these. But what, it's, what my tester is measuring is 45. So that's... Uh, that would be good if it was a smaller battery. So basically the capacity of these batteries is just under two thirds of what they were new. So they're still usable. If you rate them at a 50 amp hour battery, you know, which is basically a cheaper battery, uh, you know, you would, you would be able to get that life out of them as far as run time. Uh, I'm gonna check and see you know, if I want to actually replace these batteries, right now the prices are 150 to 200 or so based on what the brand battery is and, and who the seller is. It's, it's all over the place if you, if you look these up. You can get them on Amazon. 
You can get them from a lot of different battery retailers. It just uh, depends on how much you want to spend. And if you want to get a, a gel battery or an AGM battery, you know, you, you'd have to decide that. So here's a quick look at this Ryobi 480E electric riding mower. It was sent in my garage all summer. I took it apart in the spring to uh, check the batteries. And I'm going to go with the same batteries. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, here it is with the batteries out, all the covers off of it. And what I really wanted to show was how dirty it is under there. I don't think the previous owners actually cleaned it at all because even you can see up on the rails here that, that dirt was all over the place all in in the battery box everywhere so I'm going to blow this all off get it clean they're going to bring all the pieces out there were so many plastic covers on this and I still need to find all the screws and we're going to put this thing back together so here's the battery tray for this Ryobi riding mower. And luckily, I had this, uh, this hydraulic lift table here, this little truck that lifts up. Because to get this out, you actually have to slide this whole thing out in one piece with the batteries on it. Because you can't lift the batteries up out of the frame. Plus, there's no handles on these batteries. Ah, well, yeah, these batteries actually have handles on them that you can lift them, you know, like that. There's two handles. But to get it out of the, the mower itself, since it sits inside of a cage, I had to pull the whole tray out like this. So luckily I had this lift table that I could put them on to. And here's all the screws. I actually think there's a couple more bigger ones that I didn't put in here. But that's all the screws that it took to get this thing apart. Now I said about all the screws that were in that box. This is all the pieces that you have to take off to get to those batteries. Okay, all these pieces of trim and covers... These all have to come off for one reason or another. One's on top of another one. They all have to come off. And this here, that's the hold down that goes on top of the batteries. And you cannot take that off inside the mower. Because it's got like a shell around it. You know, it's got like a roll cage around those batteries. And they're held in there pretty good. They don't want them going anywhere. So now that I got this cleaned off... You can see a little bit better what's in here. So, you, you know, you got your two motors on the mower deck there. Then you got your, your drive. That's the drive motor, and then that's a transmission differential. It's really a single speed, but, uh, you know, it's more of a differential so that you can make turns. And there's one controller. I'm going to call it a controller. And then over there, there's another one. And, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on these things, but that's a double one there. That might be one for each uh, mower. That might be one for each motor that's on the mower deck. You know, and that would be for the main motor probably. So, you know, it looks like there's maybe three controllers. And then you got your, your operator control panel there. That's the battery disconnect. That's the, the other end of that wire is down there on the ground. It's actually, this one right here, that's what connects the battery bank to the mower. And, and I didn't even bring the seat out, you know, so there's still the seat that goes on here. But this is what it took just to get the batteries out. So now if you want to take the batteries out of yours, I would set aside a whole weekend because there's a lot to do. Especially if you want to go get new ones and put them in. Now this one, it still worked. Everything on this worked. I'm just not going to invest the money in new batteries because uh, 
the old batteries are still about 75% capacity, you know, 70% capacity. They still work. They just won't run as long. But yeah, just in case you were wondering, this is what it takes to get the batteries out. I didn't want to disassemble the whole thing, but that's what it took to get to the batteries. So now we're going to get this back in the garage and start putting it together. So now I have the battery tray back in the chassis. And uh, I have the batteries hooked up almost all the way. So there's, there's jumpers that go from one battery to the other. And then you got this frame here that holds the batteries down. And there you can see there's some more wires. And then, you know, there, it's got these covers that go on here. They really, really try to make this so nothing's going to get in here. Got to put this on the right way. So there's that cover that goes on the back. So you can see all the terminals are going to be covered pretty well. Which is fine, as long as you don't need to get to anything. And then this one's going to go on the back. So that fits in there. And then and you got this plug that plugs into the, the actual mower. And there's a little plate that bolts onto here. This is the hold down bolt for this whole frame. And uh, you cannot get that frame out of there. In order to get a battery out, you have to take the whole chat, the whole battery box out the back, which makes it a big project. And that's after you take all the covers off to get to everything. So now this is what it looks like with the battery tray completely in, with the covers over the battery terminals and all that good stuff. So now it's ready to. Now it's ready to start putting the other covers on that make it look like a regular machine and cover up all this green frame. So here's this Ryobi riding mower all back together out in the driveway, ready to cut grass. This is the RM480E with a 38 inch deck, four batteries, 12 volts each, 48 volts all together. I had the covers off this, took the batteries out to measure the batteries because the previous owner said that it seemed like the batteries just weren't holding up. And uh, the batteries are 75 amp hour batteries and I tested them with my uh, little digital tester and they measured about 49 amp hours so they're they're two-thirds of what they should be so if you uh, if you use it as having just 50 amp hour batteries that's about the, the amount of time you're going to get out of it and that's going to depend on you know how thick the grass is and all that and how far you actually have to travel to cut it you know your actual driving distance but uh i really think that the market for this particular machine right here being that the batteries you know they're like four or five years old this is around the 2000 model i really think that the market for this is just going to be uh like for a mobility like it, you know it's smaller than a golf cart so it fits in more spaces you know for just one person to ride around their property like they have a long driveway to go down and get the mail or or take their their pets for a walk you know this would really be good for dogs that don't like uh, the noise of an engine running like a, you know if you took a tractor or something but like i said it's smaller than a golf cart it still has a little hitch on the back that you could pull a little wagon you know maybe uh hook up your trash can cart to it but yeah if you took the deck off of this you'd have a nice little cart for driving around you know it's got a brake pedal on one side a, a go pedal on the other it's got a, a button for forward and reverse 
but uh yeah for something like this unless you have a, a nice small yard you know this still cuts grass it, it, it's not that it doesn't work it's just a matter of you know how long is it going to go before it's time to recharge it so i'm going to put the camera down here and see if we can run this a little bit So I'm going to start it up and drive it a little bit and uh, then I'll turn the deck on and it goes slower it, it moves slower with the deck on because it it diverts some of that power from the controller that runs the the drive wheels it takes some of the power away to run the motors for the deck So this is the speed, you know, it's downhill, but that's the speed without the deck on. And we'll, we'll go uphill. So this is full speed and we're out of camera. So now we'll run this full speed up the hill without the mowing deck on. So we'll try this again. So this is full speed with the deck off. And it goes slower in reverse because you just don't need to go that fast in reverse. Now we'll turn the mowing deck on and see how fast it goes. So there you can see what it takes to change these batteries and um, after looking back at this maybe the side covers don't have to come off but I was hoping to lift the batteries out not realizing they need to slide out the back but uh, you know it, at the end this is still a usable machine if you have a small yard this would be perfect you, you don't have to deal with any gas you just turn the key on and go and you charge it when you're not using it you know it's great for a small yard or like I said somebody that just needs something to ride around that's uh, you know smaller than a golf cart this would be a perfect little machine for that you know you, you take the deck off of this and it's easier to get on and off but uh, this still has a usable life one way or another so you know if a video is like this are useful to you please hit like and subscribe it'll really help me out and I, I want to keep doing this you know so I hope you enjoyed this video and and got something out of it